today's topic is going to be about identifying and building support. The purpose of this meeting is to explore strengths and opportunities in the support system, being able to identify new resources for support, and infuse gratitude into thinking patterns. As you know, while moving through the separation and divorce journey, you may start to realize that your social, excuse me, I'm sorry, I have new aligners. So my, <laughs> when I'm talking, I'm stirring a little bit. So don't mind that. But while moving through the separation and divorce journey, you may start to realize that your social circle has changed. And this can occur for many different reasons during a separation and divorce. And sometimes it really has nothing to do with you. So tonight we will explore our support systems and consider new ways to build support. I do believe community is essential when you're going through such a significant transition in your life. I mean, community is essential and just period, but especially when you're going through something like this, uh, a separation and divorce, I believe that it's important to have a village. It's important to have a circle like this um, and just to have a, a good support system. So I'm going to start with the check-in and I'm going to invite you all to think about what you're thankful for. So I want to start the sentence off, I'm thankful for, and then you'll say whatever it is that you're thankful for, just so we can kind of go around. If you don't feel, you know, if you don't want to share, totally okay. Um, if you don't feel like speaking, you can write it in a chat and I can say it for you or anyone can kind of shout it out what they're, what they're thankful for. So I'll leave the floor open to you. It can be as short as you will. It, it can literally be a sentence or a few sentences. But I want you to think about what it is that you are thankful for, whether it's in this moment, this week, or just in general. So I'll start it off. I am thankful for life someone else can go if they like and if you if you don't if no one wants to go that's totally okay but um we'll move on to the next part but I just think that it's a cool icebreaker just to kind of get to know what people are thankful for and your thing your your you standing in gratitude may inspire someone else um for them to be thankful for something All right. Well, we will get into our topic. <laughs> um, who supports you during this journey? Identify a person that you appreciate and tell us why. And there's a reason why we're, we're, we're discussing this. So trust me, there is a method behind my madness. Stay with me. Stay with me. Um, but who, I, who supports you during this journey? Um, and identify that person that person that you appreciate and tell us why. Does anybody have someone that currently supports them in this journey of divorce or separation? Okay. All right. <laughs> Quiet group. So if we don't have anyone who currently or if you don't want to share anyone who currently supports you during this journey, let's talk about what are your unmet needs currently right now? Are there any unmet needs? What are your unmet needs? And there's the reason why I'm asking you about unmet needs, because, again, when we're identifying new resources for support, in order for us to be able to identify the resources, we have to know exactly what is not being fulfilled. What is the need that's not being fulfilled? And sometimes it's hard for us to actually identify that. Or it may appear to be emotional labor to articulate what it is that we need or our heart desires. So this in this session, this is a group where we're able to identify those new resources for support, whether it's me helping you identify resources or even your peers having resources that they may utilize and they may be able to offer you while we explore strengths and opportunities in the support system.
Okay. Can you all hear me? Somebody write in a chat or or place an emoji just so I know that you all can hear me. Okay. You can hear me. Okay. I have a quiet group tonight. <laughs> it's okay. I do know, I know some people prefer not to speak, especially in the master class because it's being recorded. But even if you want to simply write in the chat. Um, so I asked you two questions so far. Who supports you during this journey? Well, excuse me. I asked you three questions. Who supports you during this journey? Identify a person you appreciate and tell us why, excuse me, and what are your unmet needs? Again, I'm simply asking that just so we can, so I can gauge how you can best be supported during this journey and offer you resources and also have your peers chime in for resources that they may currently use that may be beneficial to you. But since those three questions were not answered, I'll throw another one out to you. How do you feel when you are around supportive people? Or how do you feel when you're around unsupportive people? How do you feel when you're around supportive people? And how do you feel when you're around unsupportive people? Because that is, it's important to know that, right? How do you want, or how do you want to be supported when we discuss excuse me, when we discuss identifying and building support, you also have to know how do you want to be supported and, you know, what's within your control and what's outside of your control. That can also play a major part in how you navigate your separation and divorce and healing journey. So how do you want to be supported? How do you feel when you are supportive, when you are around supportive people? And how do you feel around unsupported people? I can answer. Uh, this is Molly. I am a single parent now. And so child care is an unmet need of mine. You know, just help uh, with the kids, certainly. Help with things like mowing the lawn, just very practical things. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that, Molly. Thank you for sharing that. And how, yeah, having, a, I think, with children, it puts a totally extra layer on the separation and divorce process, right? Because now when that looks like you are the primary parent, are you, do you share, is it 50, 50, or is it just, what does that look like for you? I have about 80%. Okay. And that's a lot. That's yeah, a lot yeah. to handle by yourself. And you're doing the house chores on top of parenting on top of, you know, your own maintaining you as an individual, right? Like your mental health still matters, even though you're a mom, because you can't pour from an empty cup. So ensuring that your cup is still filled, but also going through the stages of potentially your own grief during a separation and divorce process and worrying about how this, you know, your emotions can impact your child's emotions. How old is your child, if you don't mind me asking? My kids are three and six. Um, yeah, so I, I read at some point this feeling of like uh, confusion or just kind of like spinning, like I'm not getting anything done and I can't focus. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so much to do, you know. Definitely. The divorce and separation process is a roller coaster. And some days I always encourage you know the members who join on the sessions you know allow yourself to feel all the feels extend yourself some grace because some moments you'll feel like you you're able to you know do this and some moments you're just like what is going on so you'll go up and down up and down extend yourself the grace allow yourself to feel the feels but also for you especially molly and i mean anyone in this room this is imperative but being able to identify and build support for you even more, I mean, not you more than ever, but like you, because you also have children, right? And children 
can be very time consuming. Children require a lot of a lot out of us. I'm a mom, so I, I get it. But when you're going through the separation and the divorce process, sometimes you're on go mode so much that you start to operate in fight or flight, right? Like you don't know whether you're coming or going. So being able to identify and build those support systems for you, for people to alleviate some of that stress and that burden. And it sounds like you said you are a single parent. Do you have people around who can offer you that support that you may need? Even if it's just a a break for a few hours from the kids, do you have a support network who can kind of, you can lean in on? Yes, you know, but it's it's hard for us, right? To, or it's hard for me to ask for help, right? So I, you know, I've exhausted my mom's help. I am appreciate you asked who are appreciative. I'm certainly appreciative for her, but I think she's stressed now too. So now I'm like, okay, well, who do I, you know? So friends and stuff, you know. But no, it may. It, on it, trying to be open to ask for help, but it's yeah. hard. Yeah. No, it makes sense, and I think that's one of the difficult parts as well especially if you're you're not a person who, you know, likes to ask for help or you, you know, you usually manage things on your own or it can, it can feel intimidating asking for help and you don't want to, you know, emotionally dump or pour your stuff on someone else and you want to be able to receive the support, but you still don't want to over exhaust it, right? You don't want to like, overstay your welcome or over over exhaust your your helping hand. So I do think during this time and, and it can feel scary too because with children you want to be able to leave them with a trusting a trusting hand, someone that you know, someone that you um you're comfortable with. So I think right now, you know, building just kind of building a network outside of your mom or the the people that you know and I know that is also a whole nother ball game but trying to put yourself out there have you thought about like maybe joining there's a, another woman in my one of my other groups she shared you know she joins a lot of community like mom Facebook groups with other mothers who are going through similar things so they kind of alleviate some of the stress from for one another like she made a a really good friend in like this community um facebook neighborhood group and now they kind of rotate back i'm not saying this is what you have to do but just something to think about they rotate back and forth like on some weekends she may have um one of the friend's children and take them for like two hours just so the other mom can kind of get a break and then they rotate back and forth. And I don't know what that may look like for you or even if you're comfortable doing that. But I do think with building a community, like these are the reasons why we stress like community and support systems because it's so easy to feel burnt out going through the divorce, like going through the divorce and the separation. And I'm sure you know that as well as most people in the room, but being able to fill your cup and replenish your cup on a daily basis with children looks totally different than someone who may not have children because your time, you know, is dedicated to the kids. And if you're not with the kids, you may be at (coughs) work or whatever, whatever it is. So just kind of being intentional about carving out time for yourself um, so you're able to pour not only back into your cup, but also in a healthy way for, for the children as well. That's that's a good idea. Thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I see we just have some more people who just joined. Hello, Rose. Hello, Bill. Hi, April. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, beautiful people. Welcome. Today we're talking about identifying and building support. And I just kind of want to run through since a few new people just joined in. The purpose of the meeting today is to explore strengths and opportunities in the support system. Many times we think about the negative. So this meeting is to kind of highlight 
the things that are going well, exploring the strengths and the opportunities and the support system that you have, being able to identify new resources for support. There may be some resources that other members in the group utilize that you're not aware of. So being able to share um, and being able to infuse gratitude into our thinking patterns. While moving through the separation and divorce journey, you may start to realize that your social circle has changed. Excuse me. And this can occur for many different reasons. And sometimes they have nothing to do with you. So today we will be exploring our support systems and or considering new ways to build support. Sometimes we have to get a bit creative with the way our support systems systems looks because now some of our support systems no longer looks like the traditional support, right? I just shared with Molly, um, who is a single parent now, who is, you know, parenting to, to little ones and doing that, you know, by herself can feel like a lot or she may feel that, you know, she's exhausted her other resources with her family members. And, you know, she doesn't just want to put that on them anymore. So, or even having to ask them for help now. So I shared a resource that another young woman um, spoke about in one of my previous groups about joining Facebook groups, community, like local, um, mom groups in the area and it doesn't have to be mom groups it can be dad groups as well with people who are going through similar things who don't have a a network or um someone that they can kind of call on or they may have they may already have utilized that person and don't feel like calling them again so maybe reaching out to another mom in that group of course using your own level of discernment i'm not saying you know just go out And speak with people and allow them to become babysitters for your children, you know, vetting and scouting them out, you kind of seeing what type of person they are. And then from there, being able to, you know, help each other with different things. Some maybe every other weekend, you can drop the kids off for a few hours and get get some things done um, around the house. And then vice versa, you guys can kind of switch out. But I do think people who are going through similar things are more understanding of what it is that you're going through because they're right there with you. They're in the thick of it. So being a, being able to cultivate a plan with them, especially once, you know, once you guys get to know each other and you guys are, you feel safe to do so. But I do think getting creative in the ways that we seek support or even have to ask for support, especially when we're not used to doing that or used to having to do that because support systems look different. You're no longer, I know many people in the room talk about their circles changing as they go through the transition of separation and divorce, even with in-laws. Sometimes, you know, your friend groups change, the in-laws change. So I want to kind of put that out there to you right now. What looks different in your support network compared to prior to the separation and divorce? Has your your friend group changed? Has your um, has the relationship with your in laws changed? What does that look like for you now? Are those people that you still can reach out to for support, or have they now taken the back burner? What does that look like for you all? Okay. Well, I see. Again, we have a quiet group. So I'll ask you, uh, I'll kind of switch lanes here for a second. Do you feel that there are any barriers to sharing your experience? Do you feel like there are any barriers to sharing your experience when wanting to obtain support from people? Do you feel like sharing your experience can be negative? Or do you feel like it's a positive? Are you able to obtain support when you share what it is that you're going through? 
or do you feel like it it stops you from sharing because you don't want people to you know look at you in a negative way And I'm only asking because I'm a firm believer that shame dies when your stories are told in safe spaces. So when you have the space to share your story in a non-judgmental zone, I do think you're able to obtain support in a more healthy way, in a more authentic way, um, in a more sincere way, because it's no stigma attached to it, right? And being able to just share as openly as possible. And that's a part of, you know, again, the master class is here for you to receive, you know, insight, maybe offer you some alternative ways of thinking. But it is also here for you to share your story, to share what it is you, you're going through in a non judgmental space with no shame. Um, and being able to receive that support, like, again, a part of tonight's session is. Well, not a part. The main topic of the session is being able to identify and build support. And the main way you do so is by sharing. And I want you to be able to infuse gratitude into your thinking patterns. So when I ask you about, you know, who supports you during this journey or identify a person that you appreciate, it's for you to be able to have those thoughts at the forefront of your mind because during this, you know, dark chapter in your life, sometimes we can forget about the support that we may have or the resources that are around us because our minds are stuck on, you know, where we currently are. But where you currently are does not dictate who you are. It doesn't dictate where you're going to go either. And I want you to know that separation and, and divorce is not the end all be all. And although it may feel like that, especially when you're in the thick of it right now, after does not determine your journey. You have the pen. You're able to rewrite your story however you see fit. And if that means adding new resources to your life, being able to identify the resources that you already have and expound upon that, um, utilizing circles as a resource, utilizing the peers and, you know, in the rooms as resources, because many of you have a plethora of knowledge, you have different resources and you get creative. I, I've, I've heard many of you in the rooms share ways that you, you know, you seek support or you call to, excuse me, or you're able to cultivate, you know, a support system for yourselves. And I want you to also be able, you know, to share that with other people, because the way you may do something and the unique lens that you may be looking at something with, another member can be potentially inspired by that. And they may say, you know what, I want to do, you know, I want to try it that way as well. So it's, it's super important for us to be able to, you know, sit here and cultivate that spa safe space for you um, to discuss, you know, about your unmet needs, about things that you, you know, ways that you feel supported. Because with that being said, with those ways that you feel supported, we can now be that for you or not even just be that for you, but now you're able while you identify the ways that, you know, you feel supported and the ways that you don't feel supported, you're now able to have something tangible and you're naming it and being able to put that out there. So moving forward, as you navigate this divorce and separation journey, now you know what it is that you, you know, you'll accept what you won't accept, what you'll tolerate, what you won't tolerate. And you literally have a blueprint. So sometimes we want you to just be able to say it out loud so you can remind yourself. Those are reminders to yourself, right? What it is that you want. And when we discuss your unmet needs, because sometimes members are not even able to say that out loud. Sometimes people come to the groups and they're like, this is the first time I'm saying, you know, talking about my unmet needs. I've never actually identified what need was, you know, unmet. 
I knew there was a void. I knew that, you know, something wasn't sticking, something wasn't being fulfilled, but this is the first time I was able to identify it and put a name to it and attach it and say it out loud and have people rally around me and say that, you know, I deserve to have this need met and I feel less alone because I know other people in the room are also going through similar things. So just something for you to think about. Well, I'm going to switch gears really quick because I know that, again, sometimes it's hard for people to talk. Let's talk about how your Wednesdays was, beautiful people. How was your Wednesday? Is everybody, I, I want to check the temperature of the room. How was everybody's day? I think it's also important when we talk about identifying, you know, support networks and resources to check in with our people to see, like, how are you doing? Because maybe... You don't want to talk about what, what I'm talking about. So I want to see, how are you doing? Is there anything on your heart that you need to process to share? Is there anything that's kind of holding you back today? What's going on? So I don't want to pick on anyone, but I'm just going to say, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I know this is not school, so I'm not trying to call anyone out and call the names and say, hey, you need to speak. But is there anything that you're struggling with today? Anyone in the room or where do you, what do you need support with at this moment? I, I, I see that people are quiet and sometimes people just like to listen in. But is there anything that I said that resonated with you? Is there anything that you want to touch base on tonight? Can you put a, a heart if you can hear me? Okay. So, okay. As long as I know that you all can hear me, I just want to make sure I'm not talking to myself, but you're there. So I, I do know that you all are here. So that's, that's totally fine. That is totally fine. Has anyone thought about new ways in building support? New ways in building support. Hello, Vicky. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you tonight? How are you doing? Oh, I I'm good. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I just want to kind of catch you up to speed on our topic for tonight. So tonight, we're just simply talking about identifying and building support. The purpose of this meeting is to simply explore strengths and opportunities in the support system, identify new resources for support, and infuse gratitude into our thinking patterns. As you know, while moving through the separation and divorce journey, you may start to realize that your social circles has changed and this can occur for many different reasons. And sometimes they have nothing to do with you. So many times it's not to do with you. It's just the situation. Um, and today I just wanted to explore, you know, every member's support system and also consider new ways to build support if they did not currently have a support system. Um, so I'll throw out a few questions for you and we can kind of have an open discussion with that. So who supports you during this journey, Vicki? Identify a person that you appreciate and tell us why. And what are currently, what are your unmet needs? Currently, what are your unmet needs? Who supports you most? Identify a person that you appreciate and what are your unmet needs? Uh, 
to be honest it's not easy for me i have a friend she's really nice she actually asks me pretty much every day how i'm doing and you know so that's pretty much all i have i don't have any family here i do have grown like my son is 21 he's in college i mean and i have a younger kid in high school at home so i don't really have a whole lot of support system and i guess that is why i am kind of very nervous and scared about what's going to come forward and i don't know my needs i guess i just want to be on a better path i guess that's my need and want okay Well, first I want to thank you for sharing so open and honestly, Vicky. It's not easy to do so um in these rooms. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think that is important when identifying and building a support that you're clear about your needs, right? I I said earlier that sometimes we're not clear about what it is that we actually want. So being able maybe that can be something that you'll start with. actually sitting with yourself and writing a list of what are some things what are some unmet needs that i have what do i if you currently you know yearn companionship if that's a need of companionship like write some things that well also being intentional about understanding you know our wants and our needs like the differences between the two but some people may feel a desire like a heavy need for companionship and that may not be a want that can literally be a, a need that can be life and death for some people because they may suffer with you know depressive mood disorder or severe depression so companionship may be at the top of their list for a need but prioritizing like listing your needs sitting with yourself and actually you know making a list of what it is that i'm currently not you know having having my needs met like what do what it is that i want what it is that i need and actually writing it on paper because sometimes it's hard for us in our minds like to actually explain to someone what it is that we we may need it can feel like emotional labor because we're like people may not understand so just sitting down and writing and prioritizing it however you feel however you see fit what are some unmet needs what are some things that i did not have met this year that my heart really desires what 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 does that look like i hear you when you said that you you only have like one friend so maybe building that community when we talk about identifying support because having you know one friend i mean you're thankful for that one friend but i do think that you need potentially you may probably feel the need of more more people to rally around you and give you some type of support so maybe if you want to explore like building positive peer interactions maybe once or twice a month that can be a need or again i'm i don't want to assume but just kind of putting it out there maybe that's something for you to think about building a circle outside of you know your children and outside of that one friend have you ever thought do you fit or i don't want again i don't want to assume so do you feel that's a need for you maybe having another person around maybe another friend or are you okay just with that one uh it's not that easy to tell people about personal problems so even you know i have course, you know yeah. like they're not close friends they are you know sort of friends and i don't really feel comfortable talking about my personal stuff so i'm not sure if that is something i really want to do i do mm-hmm. have another colleague that i you know we talk sometimes but i don't know if i really i don't know i, yeah. I don't know if i'll be really comfortable i would if i had family definitely i think it's much easier but mm-hmm. i guess i am where i am and yeah i just i just want to I don't know what I really want to be honest. I want to not be here. It's not easy for me what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. And this is not what I expected to be here at this stage of my life. Mhm. But I guess I want to see positives in, you know, whatever is happening. I think it gave me a shock that I need to be a better person. So whatever mistakes I've done in the past, those are the mistakes that I want to correct. So I guess that's my 
I don't know what my goal is to be a better person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it, it makes sense that I, I hear you, Vicky, when you say, you know, you don't want to share with new people about what it is you're going through. And that was one of the questions as well. Are there any barriers to sharing your experience? And that right there, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel safe to share with new people what it is that you're going through. But just a suggestion, even, you know, when you meet a friend or any new person that you, you that comes in your life, you don't necessarily off the bat have to share with them about the separation and divorce process. And that's uh, important. And I know many times people are like, you know, I just kind of want to share it to get it out the way because that's an important part of who I am, but this is a a chapter in your life. This is not the full, this is not your full story. So you can keep it on a need to know basis, right? When you meet someone, literally it can just be, you know, platonic. Like it doesn't have to be anything. I think sometimes we start friendships off with like telling our life stories just so people can kind of know what it is that we're dealing with but you can meet somebody where they are and you can keep your information to yourself until you feel comfortable and I think just you know just starting on a beginner level um it can kind of take some of the pressure off the friendship as well instead of you know just going in like I'm, you know, I'm divorced, I'm going through a separation or a divorce and I'm looking for X, Y, and Z. I do think being clear about your expectations, of course, for a friendship, for what you're looking for, because I know that building adult friendships looks totally different in our older years, but I do think we can still alleviate, minimize some of that pressure without, you know, telling everything that that's currently going on with us um because the reality of it is you know when seeking friendships and support um sometimes people are on two totally different pages and being clear because some people may want someone to vent to and that friend may not have the capacity to simply listen to what it is that you're going through so in those instances when seeking support Instead of seeking a friend, sometimes maybe seeking a mental health provider, seeking a therapist um, and knowing that it's okay if we need like a high level of care or we need someone else outside of friends and loved ones to speak to. Because the reality of it is our loved ones and the friends or the acquaintances that we meet are not always going to be able to show up for us in those manners that we may prefer for them to show up or we may expect for them to show up just because they're, you know, nice people or want well for us. Um, Vicky, I see your hand is up. You have the floor, my friend. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And like I said, that is why, you know, for me, I think circles is a great place. And especially because I guess it's a wrong thing to say, maybe, I don't know, because it's kind of anonymous and it's not like, I can share honestly what I feel if I don't know anyone like personally as like, you know, suppose I'm sharing with a close friend, even, you know, I think most of the people get tired of hearing you continuously say the same thing. And honestly, I think I'm saying the same thing again and again, because I'm so sad and upset and frustrated. So I don't even know if I would like to hear the same thing again and again, because unless I'm going through it, you know, right now, Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like the other people that are here, they know what I'm going through. They kind of understand, even though all our stories are different, but they kind of understand, you know, what grief and upset and what anxiety and fear I'm going through. So for me, I think it's easier to share here rather than with people that I know, unless I don't know. It's kind of I don't know. I think people no, just get tired. Of no, you. you you make total sense, Vicky. You make total sense. So I I hear what you're saying, and I I, I said it earlier um, when I was encouraging other members to speak. You know, because I know sometimes people just come to listen, and I said shame dies when stories are told in safe spaces, and circles 
is a safe space for many people and they share their story. And, and I encourage you to share. I don't care how many times you share um, on this healing journey, which, you know, is never ending. You know, healing is not just a one stop shop. So there may be times where you're repeating yourself and sharing the story. I want you to be able to share your story as much as you need to. Because that is what's going to help you on the healing journey and being able to share it in spaces with others who are going through similar things. So there may be someone in here who's not speaking and you are the voice for them and you're going through something similar that they're going through and they may not be able to to share it just because they may feel like people are tired of hearing them talk about the same thing. But I never get tired of hearing you all because I know how important community is. And this is why we're talking about identifying, you know, support networks and identifying ways that you can build those support networks and build those resources and talk up talking about your unmet needs because being able to identify what exactly is not being fulfilled can help people offer you resources, can help people, um, you know, help with the barriers to even when you said, you know, you're tired of, excuse me, you're tired of, you know, sharing your experience because people are getting tired of it. Being able to identify those barriers right there of who, because no one has said, you know, well, I haven't said, um, and I hope no one else in any other room has said that they're tired of hearing you share, but sometimes we are our toughest critics. We place those words on ourselves and we create scenarios in our minds and we start to believe them as if they're true. And that literally can paralyze us in our healing journeys because when we say, you know, I know people are tired of hearing me speak, you know, you're placing that those words that you are starting to internalize about yourself because you feel guilty because you're sharing, but we don't want you to feel guilty and we don't want you to engage in negative self-talk about your situation. We want you to be able to share. And Vicki, I, I want you to know that this is a safe space. So share as much as you need to um, and make no apologies for it. Make, make no apologies for it. I'd rather you share here than feel like you're, you have no place to share. I can speak to that. Um, I I understand that completely. I didn't want to reach out. I didn't know. I didn't know what to say to people. You know, this isn't really a fun topic to bring up at the cocktail party or whatever, right? Um, but one of my therapists was like, Molly, you really have to reach out. You mentioned the in-laws, like to your mother-in-law. You're going to have to reach out to the friends because people want to talk to you, but they you know, are going to wait for you probably to reach out first. And I was like, oh, it just feels like so much work when I'm already hurting. And it's just another thing on the to-do list. But I did make a couple coffee dates with some kind of acquaintances that have now become much, much closer friends uh, for it. So there you go. <laughs> you know, it was worth it. It was hard to do in the beginning, but it was, it was helpful. Yeah. Well, I thank you for sharing that, Molly. And I'm glad that you did that. And you took that initiative because it can feel scary, right? Now your life looks totally, your your new reality looks totally different. Um, and I've, I've heard that in um, another room as well. Someone said that, you know, they stopped reaching out to their support network, which consisted of some friends that they used to kind of do like double date, double double husband and wife dates with because they felt like, they were no longer in that that nuclear family and it would look weird they felt that it would look weird for them to reach out and I inquired I said well did the person say that they're like no it's just something that I felt and a lot of times the things that we feel may not always be true about our uh, the circumstance right like sometimes we place and and you're entitled to feel you know weird about situations especially when the dynamics of the friendships change but I think being able to facilitate those open discussions instead of just internalizing the way you feel now as if you know 
the friend doesn't want to communicate because it can be it can be weird on both ends, right? So I think instead of creating those scenarios in our minds, which is so easy to do when we're going through this chapter and it's easy to isolate and it's easy to say like, you know what? Well, we can't double date anymore. So I'm just going to kind of go over here and do my own thing. The same, you know, unanswered questions or un, un, the, the same feelings that you may have, the other person may have too, and may be um, scared to say anything. So I think like Molly taking that initiative and being able to just kind of just reach out and, the worst that could happen is the friendship, you know, doesn't go anywhere or it stays stagnant and you all just kind of do away with the, the friendship. And of course, that's unfortunate, but it allows you other ways now to to reach out to new potential friends or being able to identify new support networks and understanding how you're going to navigate though or even exist in relationships moving forward. So once you set the precedent for that, that one relationship that Molly reached out to, I mean, excuse me, that one person that Molly reached out to, it can now start to make her feel comfortable with doing more of that. Like she reached out that they have a coffee date planned. Um, and now it can get you out your comfort zone instead of isolating to now be more consistent with that. And it's not saying you're going to do that every week. Of course, every week looks different, but I do think being able to just have those conversations um, instead of isolating, being able to reach out to people that you may be curious about that you may have not, you know, spoken to in a while, the relationships that have changed since you've gone through the separation and divorce, and if there's any unanswered questions or unresolved things that you may have um, and you want those questions answered, try to reach out. If, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But the fact that at least, you know, there's going to be some some closure on your part and these things are not kind of left up in the air to, to figure itself out. So I do want to thank you all. Um, we had a quiet group tonight, but that's okay. I know sometimes we people just come to listen. But Molly, I want to thank you for sharing um, as a new a new user on this platform. I know you said that you just like to kind of sit and listen in. But I thank you for trusting me with your story tonight and sharing a, a piece of your story. Um, I do hope that you all are able to do something for yourselves this week to pour into yourself. You know, I am a firm um, believer and advocate about self-care and prioritizing your mental health. So I hope you're able to pour into your cup this week. Do you have any good plans coming up this week for you, Molly or April? You know, I'm actually fresh off a um, wellness retreat with hiking and yoga. So I'm nice. feeling pretty refreshed, honestly. Um, but yes, it was, uh, it was well needed. Just a little bit of spiritual care, a little bit of physical activity does the body good nature. So yeah. nice. How long yeah. was the retreat for? It was four nights um, in Zion National Park. It was quite lovely. Where's Zion National Park at? Where's that located? So, uh, Utah. Oh. West Utah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, that's an experience. Was that yeah, your first I mean, time going? Not an everyday thing, but it did kind of reboot my uh, my love for just taking in a little bit of nature and exercise. So I'm trying to keep that going. <laughs> Was that your first time going to that retreat? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, listen. Yeah. What yeah. better way, especially with you know the path that you are currently on in your life. I think that you, you needed that. There was a reason why yeah. um, you I were called. I purposely cold. chose that over like a drunken trip to Mexico or something. I thought that probably <laughs> wasn't a good way to cope with what's going on. So yeah. there we go. You know. Well, definitely. <laughs> that's definitely a healthy alternative. And, that's right. Um, a way to build support. And um, so, I yeah. guess thank you, Rashida, very much. It's been such a positive light this evening. You're welcome. Of course, you're welcome. I hope you all have an amazing week. 
Take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you all soon. Have a great evening. Bye-bye now. Bye.